Okay, in this video, I'm going to sum the first 100 integers from 1 to 100 inclusive. This is equivalent to adding from 0 to 100 inclusive. I'm going to do it using two methods, the first one being Euler's method and the second one using integration. Before I continue, I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. Here I have all my videos archived and listed, and I also have a few other bits and pieces which may be of interest to you. Firstly, let's look at Euler's method. We can write the problem of summation using the summation notation here. So we're summing from n is equal to 0 to 100 of n. And we can write that using all, you know, 0 plus 1 plus 2, the whole way up to 100. And what Euler did was he started looking at pairs of numbers and he looked at their sum. So he picked 1 and he picked 100 and saw that their sum was 101. He incremented 1 and decremented 100 and added their sum. So he added 2 and 99, which of course also adds to 101. This procedure can be repeated and we find the whole way down to 49 plus 52 is 101 plus 50 and 51 is 101. So that means the problem of adding the first 100 integers, or equivalently from 0 to 100, can be recast as multiplying 50 by 101, giving us 5050. So the sum of the first 100 integers is 5050. It perhaps surprisingly large figure. The next technique we'll use is integration. Before I do that, I need to remind you of a few properties of integration. Remember, the Riemann sum is something which tries to calculate the area under a curve. So let's look at an arbitrary f of x. What we do is we break the area underneath the curve into rectangles of width delta x and height f of x. It's very important to note that if we sum the areas of each rectangle, it approximates the area under the curve f of x. So we could say, for example, that the area under the curve, I'm going to call it s, is approximately the sum from n is equal to 0 to n of f of x times delta x. And this is what's known as the Riemann sum. We can extend this concept by looking at the limit of the Riemann sum as delta x approaches 0. In doing so, we result in an integral. The integral would be, in this case, from 0 to n of f of x dx. So we've gone from delta x to dx, the infinitesimal change. It is important to note that a sum is only approximated by an integral, but a Riemann sum is an integral in the limit. So going back, the problem we have is to calculate the sum of the first 100 integers, which I've written in this format here. Note that there is no dx term. Well, there is really, it's the constant term 1. But this means we are not able to approach this or be, make this into a, an integral in the limit. So comparing what the integral will give us against the sum. We saw the sum was 5050. If we integrate x between 0 and 100, we get the sum of x squared over 2 between 0 and 100, which is 5,000. Of course, there is a difference of 50 here. Note, by the way, we can rewrite the, the result of the integral in this summation notation here, which I will use at a later stage. So it appears that there is some form of an error associated or an er error, excuse me, between the integral and the sum. So it is not a Riemann sum, but rather um, it's just a sum itself. On front of you, I've plotted a graph of the first few integers, and I've also plotted f of x is equal to y is equal to x. So we see the, the straight line f of x is equal to x here. And I've plotted all of the areas of the first few integers. Note, by the way, these are it's the area we have to plot. So when we're trying to add these using a graph, it's the area we're looking at rather than the, sing the actual values of a particular points on the graph. In the limit, when the Riemann sum becomes the integral, the area calculated will be the one underneath the curve here. This, of course, is in contrast to the real area which we're trying to calculate, 
which I'm drawing in blue or I'm shading in in blue, which is above what will be calculated by the integral by a certain amount on each, uh, each iteration. So what we've seen is that summing the first 100 integers or going from 0 to 100 is equivalent of as doing the integral of x between 0 and 100 and adding an error term. The point to note here is that each rectangle in our graph has an area of n, in other words it's at the point n multiplied by width of 1. So the error is simply n minus the integral from n minus 1 to n of x dx. Note by the way I'm using dummy variables. So inside my summations I'm going to use the variable k and inside the integrals I'm going to use the dummy variable x. So putting this error into an expression or an equation is, is written here. So you have the summation of n uh, is equal to 1 to n. We have k minus the integral of k, k minus 1 to k of x dx. So now I've skipped a few steps here in fact, but you realize that what I've written is in fact correct. Putting it all together we find that the error is equal to n over 2. So finally then, we saw that the sum is the integral plus the error. Well the integral be, can be written as the sum, as I showed you earlier on, and we can plug in for the error which we've just calculated. We see that 100 squared is 1000, or 10,000 divided by 2 is 5000. And we need to add to that 100 divided by 2 is 50, which gives us 5050 as expected. So in fact, this procedure of doing the integral and adding the error term was successful. So what I was trying to highlight there is the difference between a Riemann sum or an integral and a straightforward sum. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and you might also click on University Physics Tutorials. Thank you.